Good afternoon. This is Shruti Pandit and today I am at Poonam Soni Jewelry Boutique. Let me bring to you a transformational leader in the field of jewelry designing. This leading jewelry designer has literally revolutionized Indian jewelry designing market with her unconventional, bold and colorful and unique jewelry designs. She has put India on the global map and now spotlight is on India in the field of jewelry designing. Her world famous collections are the monochromes, the Mughal collection, Gaudi revived and glass on the wall. Ladies and gentlemen, I have with me a leading jewelry designer of India, Poonam Soni. Hi Poonam, how are you? Hi Switi, I'm good, thank you. And Poonam, the first question that I have for you is that how would you define luxury in jewelry? Hmm. So luxury in, uh, let's say luxury is something which is uh, feel good feeling. Mm -hmm. It is an aspirational uh, concept and it is something which uh, I think everyone desires luxury of some kind in their life. It could be a Caribbean cruise, it could be a 20 carat solitaire. For men, it could be something which they feel is luxury. But um, in jewelry, uh, luxury is more of uh, one of a kind pieces of jewelry. Uh, custom designed jewelry, bespoke, with a great ambiance for sales. Having uh, one of a kind pieces of jewelry which are specially designed for so it becomes her special piece which no one else has. It also means giving them a great experience for shopping. When they come to the boutique, they get pampered, you take care of them, they have a dialogue with you. They can actually talk their heart out that this is what I want and you create it for them. So otherwise, normally when you go shopping, you have to compromise and buy what is available. But here we recreate dreams. And I think if you can have a piece which you can say this is my personal piece, and you have a great experience and you feel good when you've done the shopping, that is a, that for me is luxury in jewelry. Okay, Puna. Puna, back then when you started in 1989, jewelry market in India was pretty close. So what were the challenges that you faced and how you achieved what you have achieved right now and how you reached here? Tell us about the journey. Well, the journey was very, uh, it was very, uh, Exhausting. It was very difficult. It was a journey because yes, the jewelry market in 1989 was uh, belonged to the jewelry houses. It was more closed, so anyone new in jewelry had to be from their family only. It was a hereditary concept, so much so that licenses were needed to start a jewelry business. In 1989, I think the licenses got abolished, and I was blessed in that thing that I could start the jewelry business. And uh, I started from home because I wanted to experiment that the very revolutionary design, the concept I have, will it work? In my heart I knew it would work because I'm a very positive person and I, I, you don't start anything to fail, you start it to succeed. I had a dream and I knew I was going to culminate that dream into a success story. But uh, how to go about it and the struggles that I had, uh, that those, were, those were not something I really envisioned because everything came during the journey, I had to take care of it. So simple things like uh, how to have the, how to sell the jewelry, how to have, uh, uh, how to insure it, from where do I, uh, you know, or what kind of safes do I get. Small, small things which today sound very uh, basic and easy but really difficult then. Because we didn't know how, I didn't know how to go about anything. Marketing, selling, insuring, accounts, what is the system in the jewelry business. And uh, the jewelers were really not very, they, 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 they didn't want to encourage competition obviously, they didn't want more jewelers starting out. So it was tough but I think it was a very exciting journey also because it's the tougher part which make you into a success story and uh, make you uh, more receptive to handling bigger challenges. And looking down the line today, I, I think I enjoy the moment, the good and the bad and uh, now we are here, we are selling uh, whatever I had, I had uh, dreamt of did work. I remember giving an interview uh, almost uh, 20 years ago saying that my dream is to have a signature boutique. Well, I have my signature boutiques mm -hmm. and uh, I have now, I am selling to various countries. Mm -hmm. uh, lately we have started uh, working from USA 
New York, and now I'm going to Hawaii. So it's been great to join you. Thank you. Well, that's a very inspiring story. And this tells us that how your designs and collections are different from other. You know, you're known for innovative and out of the box designs. So how are they different? I think uh, it's because I have a vision, a very clear cut vision and I have a passion and I design right from here, my heart. And uh, when I travel, uh, I pick up inspirations uh, like whatever excites me, whether it's architecture or it's paintings. Every holiday of mine I've come back and done a new collection because I've come back so relaxed and so, uh, you know, I didn't have, yeah, child up. I didn't have uh, challenges and business issues over there bothering me. My mind was totally empty. So I absorbed, and whatever I absorbed, I created into a fabulous collection. And uh, so uh, the the difference my designs have are, I don't follow a set pattern that jewelry has to have this, this, and not this. I feel the jewelry is a creation of the designer. It can have anything, as long as I believe in it. So I put in even semi-precious stones into jewelry. I put in uh, rose cards. I put in sapphires. All these things were taboo in fine jewelry in India at one time. Fine jewelry was only diamonds, gold, and uh, emeralds, sapphires, and rubies. So I brought in rotolites, malachites. I brought in a revolution in jewelry design. I just experimented from my heart and experimented. You know. So my jewelry is more multi-dimensional, colorful, red carpet, statement. You can wear one piece, and it must make an impact. So many times people tell me uh, that's a Poonam Sony piece. My clients say that I wore it and people said that's a Poonam Sony piece. So I guess it has a very clear identity. Poonam, I also want to know that how internationally you have shown spotlight on India. So like where all have you received recognition all over the world? Mm, I traveled first to, uh, I think, I don't remember in the chronological order, but I'll tell you some of my main highlights. I've uh, showcased at the opening in, in opening of the Incredible India at the Garden de Mission in Paris. It was at the invitation of Mark Chimay of uh, the Louis Vuitton World Tennessee Group. It was a great platform for me. I have worked with uh, the Spanish government. Mm -hmm. I got patronage for them for my collection Gaudi Divide. Uh, I have been sponsored by the Theatre Nouveau in Paris. Uh, I actually showcased at the OECD, which is an economic forum. Uh, then I, Prince Albert invited me to take part in his Echo Art Charity Parade and designed a very unique piece. And uh, every designer represented one country, so I was representing India. So it was a great journey. And then after that, Michael Kors endorsed me. Then uh, the books in London, uh, some of the books like the Rolls Royce coffee table book, they described me as a jeweler to the collector. Normally you find uh, jeweler to the stars. Mm -hmm. I was described as a jeweler to collectors, which I think is a great platform for a bespoke designer. Mm -hmm. Because collectors over the world then why to have a photo so mm -hmm. And uh, now we're doing Hawaii, as I mentioned earlier. So uh, there's been a lot of, there've been many more the Tahitian government to call a magazine on me. They oh. felicitated me. Okay. And uh, well, there've been a lot, but these are some of the great times. It's interesting to know that, that you're, you're receiving accolades from all over the world for the hard work and for you know the journey that you have, for the tough part of the journey, you're getting rewards out of it. It's really inspiring. Um, my next question is, what are the upcoming jewelry trends in 2016? Well, I think uh, you need all kinds of jewelry in your wardrobe. Like I would need a lighter piece, I would need a little bit of gold, diamonds, or cocktail rings to wear in the evenings. I would require um, or jewelry to wear at a wedding. So I think you need all kinds of jewelry. But the design definition also comes with the trend forecasts, which happen from fashion trends. So we have to keep in touch with them because a lifestyle is always cohesive and correlated. You can't have something happening in clothes and not happening in jewelry, which will match those two. So um, the trend forecast which I see for next year is a lot of yellow gold coming back. And jewelry uh, mood moving back to the vintage. Vintage, classic, Victorian, floral motifs, emeralds, a lot of emeralds. And I think uh, the old mood is coming back, the jewelry of the royal Maharajas and all is back. And uh, that's a trend you have to move in, and platinum is going to be part of your uh, jewelry box all the time. Okay. And my last question to you is that, uh, are you excited to be the part of Make in India story? Very. Because I feel that India has so much potential to start. It is like a, 
hot house of talent, which is that uh, you know jewelry stones and potential bursting forth. And uh, as an entrepreneur, when I used to travel, I used to have a lot of problems and blocks in places which I didn't know how to solve and where to go. So I think I'm getting an opportunity for my country and also a responsibility to be able to do something. And I'm really excited to put potential in that area where I can give my country something back for so much I've got in return. So the first thing I plan to do is uh, we'll create a kind of a body which can solve the problems of entrepreneurs and big jewelry houses who go abroad and they have different. Second is I really want to make the make in India label very really strong. So I feel that when people say, "Oh, I'm wearing a piece which is made in Italy," I want them proudly to say, "I'm wearing a piece made in India." And uh, also, I want to uh, I want to actually tap the uh, the production house in India. We can get a lot of production from the Western countries into India. Some of my designer friends who are foreigners are producing in Jaipur, but I'm talking of a larger scale that we need to tap the mindset and the discipline, the social structure of this country, and we can get a lot of production in India. I think we have potential. And uh, the other vision I had was, that we have a lot of population, we should, we should use it to our advantage and structure the model of production. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have, uh, I think uh, there's a lot to be tapped, it's going to be a lot of hard work, and if, even if I can make that difference, to put India on a Cloris India map, I'd be very happy to. Uh, it's been lovely talking to you and we wish you good luck in all your future projects. So ladies and gentlemen, here I have with me the lady who's behind the first luxury brand in the field of jewelry designing in India, Poonam Soni. The lady who has literally dazzled, glittered and sparkled India on the global map by her exotic designs. And this is Shruti signing off.